Jonathan Chait wrote a great article in New York Magazine about how Romney has screwed himself with the 47% comments. Well, so first of all, he writes about how in the ad that we showed you last week where President Obama runs the 47% ad, it shows people who are in the 47%, shows Romney saying, I don't care. He said, and I hadn't noticed this, you can hear the silverware in the background as Romney's talking at that $50,000 a plate fundraiser. You hear rich people with their, like, you know, you can almost see them uh, swirling their teeth. I do declare, clink, 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 clink. what do you say about the poor? <laughs> right? And then he says, the comments destroy Romney's fundamental credibility. Here America sees what he says behind closed doors. Nothing he can say in public can possibly overcome the damage of these comments because voters will quietly, correctly assume, quite, quite correctly I should say, assume that he's telling them what they want to hear. Ding, 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 we have a winner. Exactly. Now, whatever Romney says in public, they're like, yeah, 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 dude. I heard what you were saying when you guys were all tinkling the teacups. Okay? You're not interested in helping us. We got it. Loud and clear. You know who else has it? The Republicans. Here it comes. If I hadn't called the election already, I'd call it today. Now, let me give you two devastating facts. Number one, Republican pollsters and party leaders on a conference call talking about the polls. Now, if they were winning, they would be very upbeat. Instead, they are sullen. Now, there's this group called Res uh, Resurgent Republic. It's a right-wing group led by Ed Goes, and he is uh, one of their top pollsters. What does he say about the blue-collar voters? Look at this. In terms of blue-collar voters, and again, I would add one thing, we're not looking for a majority of these voters, not looking for a plurality, pl plurality but we are looking to see if there are a handful you can peel off. They're not looking for a majority of blue-collar voters, which, by the way, are the majority of voters. They're not looking for a plurality. They're like, dude, if we could just get like a couple of blue-collar guys to vote for us. Just like two or three. I, we just, I'm begging you, dog. I'm begging you. This says the middle class is turned on us. They hate us. That's exactly right. Now, Haley Barber's on the call. Haley Barber is one of the top Republican leaders. He raised the money behind the scenes, former Mississippi governor. They asked him about, hey, how's this campaign going? Quote, the Obama people spent a whole lot more money to try to define and disqualify Romney than Romney pe people did to introduce Romney. If you're not observing that all that carpet bombing from April to August was largely unhindered by the Romney campaign, I think you miss a big point. So two interesting admissions there. Number one, they blitzkrieged us. We're hurt, dog. Don't ask me if I'm all right. I just got my ass carpet bombed. And I do not love the smell of napalm in the morning. So he's saying, hey, look, we got our ass kicked in that time. Interesting point number two. Hey, wait a minute, I thought you guys was the CEOs, and oh, yeah, you're so smart, and you had Mitt Romney is going to be the guy who brings jobs back because he's the top CEO. And you just told me he got carpet bombed. He got destroyed. You, and you guys had more money. What'd you do with all the money, Lebowski? Where'd it go? Oh, God, this is a disaster. Now, Obama had more money he could spend uh, before the general election, but you think that if you're a competent campaign, you couldn't figure out a way to do independent expenditures so you didn't get framed in all the wrong ways? And listen to what Barbara's saying. He's basically saying we've already lost. We got framed the wrong way, and as the guy earlier in the call told you, we can't find two blue-collar voters to vote for us. How the hell are you going to win an election in that case? Finally, Haley Barber has an interesting, subtle admission here. He says, quote, about Romney, the burden is on him. It's his election to win, has been the whole time. He has to do it. Now, wait, right after they got done telling you about how they're getting their ass kicked, why would he say that, that it's all about Romney? Because he knows they've already lost. Now, he doesn't want it to be about the Republican Party. He doesn't want it to be about right-wing ideology. So they're already doing the blame game and say, oh, it was Romney's to win. 
goddamn bad candidate Romney if he had just done our policies effectively, if he had just brought us our ideology the right way, if he'd said the right things, if he'd conducted the right kind of campaign, we could have won. We could have won. I'm telling you, we could have won. But it was goddamn Mitt Romney. He blew it. They were already saying that. And we're nowhere near the election, but it gets worse. Now, on the current television show, The Young Turks, with Cenk Uger, that would be me, uh, that, the host had an interesting prediction. Now, this was back on September 19th, and I put Mitt Romney on the clock. I said, at some point, the Republicans are going to pull their money. In fact, here, watch. We're going to count up, and we're going to find out how many days it's going to take before the Republicans pull the chute and go, okay, no mas, we're not putting any more money into the presidential race, we're shifting the money into the Senate and the congressional races, because it's going to happen. So I said, hey, listen, you'll know that this election is over when the Republicans start moving their money, right? Well, here we go. Fox Business Channel, look at what they're reporting today. So what does this mean, Charlie, that they think President Obama's getting reelected? Um, Yes, or likely. We should point out that this is a new trend. Um, money that was going to or pledged to, to Mitt Romney's uh, presidential campaign being now diverted to House and Senate seats. That is not good news for Mitt Romney. Now, a lot of businessmen have supported Mitt Romney. They say, why am I putting the, our money in a campaign which is losing? It's better off to divert it to other races which aren't where we have a chance to keep the House, maybe take the Senate or add seats to the Senate. <laughs> Just like I told you, they're moving the money. They're saying this guy's a loser. He's already lost. Let's just try to save the House and the Senate. Fox Business says more. Mitt Romney has not lost yet. No. Um, I could just tell you what his big money people are doing. They're hedging, or they're, the trend is to begin to hedge. It's not yet in the numbers, but the people in the Romney campaign, I am telling you, they're telling the Fox Business Network firsthand, they're feeling it, they're worried, they're hoping a good debate, debate performance yeah. can, can either reverse that trend or maybe you know, prevent it from taking, taking uh, the, the form of a mass exodus. Suplex! <laughs> Paul Driver, what's see feel like? Oh, my neck. Oh, jeez, Lord mercy. Got to get a neck brace for that. No, no, no. Whoever wants to stay, stay, stay. Whoever wants to run, run, run. Big donors, run for the hills. Romney, it was nice knowing you.